This is GitHub Copilot using Microsoft's new Fabric MCP server to tell me how I can use the admin API to get all users who have built a report in the past year. In this video, we're going to be talking about what an MCP server is, what the Microsoft Fabric MCP server can do currently, an emphasis on currently, and then finally, how you can install it on your own personal computer. That way you can check it out on your own. But before we do all of that, if you're interested in business intelligence, in particular Microsoft Power BI or Fabric, please consider hitting that subscribe button and giving this video a thumbs up. And hey, if it gives you the option to hype the video, do that too, because it really helps the channel grow and lets me know what kind of content you guys want to see in the future. So without further ado, what is an MCP server? Well, imagine you have an AI assistant like Copilot, Claude, Gemini, and you want it to be able to do more than just chat back and forth with you, uh, regurgitating the data that it was trained on. Well, that's where an MCP server comes in. It's what allows you to actually interact with tools, run commands, or pull data. You can really kind of think of it as a translator between your AI assistant and the real world. It connects the AI to external tools, APIs, or files, and it helps the AI kind of understand how to use those tools, keeping everything in sync so that way the AI, which is over here in this LLM, actually knows what's going on. Without an MCP server, the AI is essentially just guessing, but with it, it's actually understanding how to do and interact with things. So as you can imagine, something like this is super exciting for Microsoft Fabric, which is like this SaaS platform uh, where you can create all kinds of data objects. It's also super important because Microsoft Fabric is growing and growing and growing, and it's increasingly becoming harder and harder and harder to know it all. So having an AI assistant that can help you do things in Microsoft Fabric, some of which can be very technical, is super helpful. So then taking a look at the Microsoft Fabric MCP server announcement, we can start to see what the MCP server actually can do today. And I'm going to be honest with you, the answer is not very much. It mainly can uh, help you create code to use the APIs and create objects. Uh, but it's running locally on your computer. So it's not going to go out into your tenant and do all of the stuff on its own. However, that's not to say that it's not useful. It has access to all of the Microsoft documentation and it's been trained to understand best practices in Microsoft Fabric. So in the example that I showed earlier in the video where I asked it, hey, how can I get all the report views in the past year? It knew exactly where to go. And the thing is, is that this MCP server is available on GitHub for other people, even people I think outside of Microsoft to contribute capabilities to, which means that well, this might seem pretty small just right now, it's likely going to grow and expand as the community gets a hold of it. So how can you install the Microsoft MCP server on your own? Well, starting out, you need to go into a code editor. I'm currently using VS Code. Uh, you wanna go into new terminal, right? And then you wanna clone the repository down onto your local computer. So I'm gonna go over here to this blog post. And by the way, I'll put this blog post down below in the video description. You wanna go uh, git clone, right? So let's go over here and we'll paste this in. And then we want to uh, CD that folder. So in this case, I'm gonna CD MCP, right? And then we're gonna go back over to these instructions we're going to want to build the project that we just cloned. Now you will need uh, .NET, I believe nine, which is something that I had to install. And I installed that simply by just going over here to .NET nine and then downloading the newest version of .NET. So I'm running Windows 64 bit. So I just downloaded this one over here. But once you have that installed, you should be able to build the project. So go right over here and then uh, pasting it in. And what will end up happening is your computer will run and it will process 
the project that you just cloned down and it'll produce an executable. Once that code has finished running, you need to go find it. So I'm gonna go over here, do, 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 into this folder where I created it. I'm gonna go into uh, MCP, then I'm gonna go into servers. I'm gonna go into the fabric MCP folder. I'm gonna go into SRC and then I believe I'm going to go into bin, release, and then it should be in here somewhere. And there it is, uh, fabmcp.exe. Once I have this path, what I need to do is in the folder that my VS code is currently working in, I need to create a file called a .vs code backslash mcp.json. So the way I can do that right here would be going .vs code, and then I would go backslash, right, mcp.json. Now, this already exists, so it can't create it um, because I'm already running the mcp server. However, I'm running it off of a different location. All right, so I have this JSON file right here, and you need to update it to the JSON file of your exe. So if we go over here, do, 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 and we go into properties, do, 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 here is that file path. So we'll go ahead and we will copy that, All right? And we'll paste this. And then since I'm in Windows, I need to go uh, and put the exe name in. So I'll go right over here and I'll go rename and I'll grab this right here. EXE. Now I do need to do one more thing and that is to go through right here and add some double quotes or double backslashes I should say. God, why did I say quotes? All right, so I'll add these double backslashes in. That way the string is fine. Do, do, do. And then I will go ahead and I will hit save. And then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna restart VS Code fully. So I'm gonna hit that exit sign. And by the way, if you wanted to get that JSON server that I was using, uh, that's what I was doing right over here. So I'm gonna then go reopen Visual Studio Code. And then once I am in Visual Studio Code, we need to make sure that the MCP server installed correctly. So I'm gonna hit Control uh, Shift P and I'm gonna search for MCP. I can then go right over here to MCP list servers, and then it will show all of the MCP servers that I currently have installed on my computer. As you can see right here, I have the Microsoft Fabric MCP server, uh, and it's been stopped. So I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna go start server. This will then start trying to run the MCP server. Nope, oh, and as you can see, look, I, uh, pointed it to the wrong location. So we need to go back over and we need to figure out what I did wrong. And it looks like I forgot a backslash. So let's save that and let's try this one more time. So we're gonna go back over here, gonna go into Visual Studio Code. Then we're gonna hit that Control Shift P, list servers, Microsoft Fabric MCP start server. And it's gonna go ahead and it's going to start that Microsoft MCP server. Now I'm using VS Code, which means that I have a GitHub Copilot installed. However, I believe you can also use this MCP server uh, with Claude Desktop as well as Gemini, the Gemini CLI. Although I'm not 100% sure and I haven't fully gotten it working on either. That said, we do have it working in VS Code with GitHub Copilot. So let's give it a run and let's see what it can do. So jumping back into VS Code, I'm gonna open up a new chat window and then I'm going to switch Copilot into agent mode. And then I'm gonna go over here to tools and I'm gonna basically uh, uncheck every single tool except for the Microsoft Fabric MCP server. That way we can, you know, we know we're getting uh, exactly what the MCP server is bringing. And then, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click okay. Then let's ask it a question. So I'm gonna say, I want to refresh a Power BI report using the Microsoft Fabric API. Let's hit enter and let's see what it goes ahead and does. So it's working 
it is using the MCP server to search Microsoft documents. It's looking for a code sample. Then after about a minute of it recording, you can see it's given me some links to some documentation, a bunch of sample code I can use to then go ahead and start building. So am I going to use this tool in my day-to-day -day workflow moving forward? Probably not. To me at this point in time, what it sees seems like is kind of a glorified, super fancy documentation search tool that's capable of writing some basic code scaffolding. However, I'm really exciting, excited about the underlying technology and the future possibilities. So I'm going to keep my eye on this space. That said, if there's something that I missed, let me know down below in the comments. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe and give it a thumbs up.